A chapter from Unearthing My Irish Roots. This is a story of scandal, shame, and betrayal. It is also an example of the irony of life. James Francis Scanlon was 14 when his father died in the 1918 Carbondale mine explosion. His mother, Mamie Mary Flanagan, was a widow at 36 years old with six children. James had never known the awful Irish great hunger that brought his family to America, but he had heard the stories of the political attempted genocide of the Irish by the then ruling class of England. Combined with the potato famine, had almost decimated County Mayo and other poor farming areas. After his father's death, his mother, Scanlon, sold their small house and moved her family to Dunmore, Pennsylvania. She had family there who owned a small farm. Dunmore promised so much by its agricultural expectations. At the time, the area was known as Providence. The population of Dunmore and Blakely, doubling in numbers and increasing in wealth, encouraged Mr. Stephen Tripp to erect a saw and grist mill in 1820 on the Roaring Brook, half a mile south of the village. And then a store was opened at the corners in 1820 under the auspices of the Jernkrin Turnpike. But the village only consisted of four houses. And there was a negative existence until the Pennsylvania Coal Company in 1847 turned the sterile pasture field around this area into a town, liberal in the extent of its territory and diversified in every variety of life. This became Dunmore. The cousins of Scanlans, called the Flanagans, had the best land in the low terrace of the valley. Their crops, hay, oats, buckwheat, and corn, provided sustenance to the family and some produce and milk they had to sell for cash. The barns and other farm buildings stood on the west side near the road and creek, facing the house on the opposite side of the highway. Dairy cows brought in the most income. James, my great grandfather, was given the task of carrying the milk in cans holding 40 quarts. The pigs became hams, bacon, pork roast, salt pork, and sausage. And usually Mr. Flanagan sold one or two dressed hogs to a meat market or to a neighbor, but the family ate most of it. The structure that Mamie and James and the rest of the children lived in was not much more than a shack. The children all slept in one room and Mamie the other. There was no kitchen, which was all right since they had their meals in the main farmhouse. The bathroom, however, was an outhouse a hundred yards away. The lack of modern facilities made good hygiene difficult, but James managed to spruce up on Saturday nights for the local dance, the Nelson family. They held a dance at their barn, a barn dance. The local musicians would play the music of the time. Music was rapidly changing. It was the Roaring Twenties. James was quite the accomplished dancer. With his hair slicked back and dressed in his Sunday best, he presented quite a figure. He was known as a ladies' man. He also had the sexual prowess to match his charm. His gift of gab would open the door for each new conquest. The flirty banter and his sense of humor were key. Once the unsuspecting girl let him in, she was destined for a heartbreak. He was a row with the ladies and never thought about settling down until the night he met Beatrice Jenkins. She walked into the barn dance that night in a gingham dress, her flaming red hair pulled back with a big green bow. He practically flew across the barn to grab her before anyone else could step in. The rest of the evening, she was his, and he was hers. That love at first sight phenomena. They were inseparable from that night on. She knew he was a rogue, but she loved him anyway. He was spellbound. 
soon after his mother moved her children again, this time to Prospect Avenue in South Grand. She was able to buy a small house with the money from the sale of the house in Carbondale. And James and Beatrice continued their whirlwind love affair. He would have to hitchhike to Dunmore to see her. South Scranton seemed idyllic compared to some of the places they had lived. The population of Scranton at the time was about 102,000 people, making it the third largest city in Pennsylvania. Ironically, in later years, Scranton would be deemed the official sister city of Bolina County Mayo, connect Ireland, Bolina being where the Scanlon ancestors were from. So on March 11th, 1926, James and Beatrice were married. They settled in with his mother on Prospect Avenue. They had two sons, James Jr. and Henry. The family grew and the home became more cramped for space. A lot of Irish families seemed to have big families but small houses at the time. James drank quite a lot and Beatrice suspected dalliances with other women. But in that era, you stayed married no matter what. There was even a law that said you could beat your wife if the rod or stick you used did not exceed the width of your thumb. James was having relations with a girl in Dunbar. Catherine Quinn was only 15. I don't know all the details, but I do know he got her pregnant. And in 1927, she gave birth to my father and placed him in St. Joseph's Orphanage in Dunbar. The baby's name on the birth certificate was listed as Thomas Quinn, father unknown. In 1943, James Jr., his son, brought home a pretty last named Betty Jane Pittman. Now, his son James and Betty Jane were both seniors at Scranton Technical High School. James Sr. flirted with Betty Jane and came on like gangbusters in front of his wife and kids. For some reason, Betty Ann was also attracted to him for whatever reason. A few weeks later, they ran off together. Yes, James Sr., a 42-year-old man, and his son's girlfriend, 17 years old. Records indicate they later married somewhere in New York State. James Jr. never recovered from his broken heart and his father's shameful behavior. He would become an alcoholic. He never knew he had a brother, although they lived six blocks apart. His brother was adopted under the name of Matteo Tallo, and Matteo was also an alcoholic. They might have sat next to each other in the bars on a bar stool in one of the neighborhood bars and had a friendly conversation. Sadly, on Christmas Day, 1975, James Jr. was found dead, laying in the snow of his backyard. He was only 45. As promised, a tale of scandal, shame, and irony. And many more chapters like this can be found in my book, Unearthing My Irish Roots by Mimi Cowell on Amazon and Audible. Thanks for listening.